Good evening and welcome to the Committee of the Whole meeting for Thursday, uh, May 18th, 2023. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Good evening. Director George Taylor. Present. Director Beverly Harris. Present. Director Beverly Harris. Present. Director Tyler Quinn. Present. Director Fred Green. Director William Riley. Director Ken Washington. Director Christina Delva. Madam President Jim Miller. Present. All right, so we will start off with our policy uh, committee chair, Ms. Kathy Harris. Good evening. Good evening. That's our land school district policy committee updates. In preparation for the committee of the whole and receivers meeting, the policy committee met on Monday, May the 8th, 2023. The purpose of our meeting was to discuss policy re revisions to, uh, to category 100 program. There are 36 policy updates on the agenda with policy documents attached at detail Update documents uploaded under agenda item E1. The district welcomes your feedback on policies and administrative regulations. Any questions, comments regarding policies and or administrative regulations can be emailed to Dr. Latrice Mooming, Assistant Superintendent at policies at Chester Upland dot org. The next policy meeting will be held on June 23rd, June 2023. On a date to be determined due to the annual federal programs monitoring visit on Thursday, June 1st, 2023, board policy revisions for 200 pupils, 300 employees, and any remaining policies will be discussed in the June committee meeting. The end of my. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? I think you mentioned the fact that they are listed online. The policies where we would be able to read them. Yes. So the the students. I noticed the one for extracurricular participation. That doesn't include um, summer program or day. I would have to ask Doctor. What's that, the extracurricular activities? Yeah, so it's, it, it covers all extracurricular activities um, within the school year. Um, our extended, our school summer programming, um, it's only for activities that they don't, we don't offer at, um, at the schools. Okay, so it's extracurricular. Extracurricular. They can't participate. They don't, no. Because I've had parents ask me, can um, their students that go to charter schools come here for summer programming? No. Right on, I'm correct on that, Dr. Wilson. That is correct. Dr. Mean, I know it's your, your, your policy, but that is not typical. No. Okay. But it's a question. That is. Okay, we're going to move now to the HR report. Uh, May 2023 personnel report. The Department of Human Resources is preparing for the end of the year regarding staffing. As the business office finalizes the district's budget for the 2023-2024 school year, HR will continue its recruitment efforts with the intent to have all positions filled before the start of the school year. We are excited to announce that staff are taking advantage 
of the opportunity to enroll in the new special education certification program that is being offered to all interested districts employees through the district's partnership with Widener Partnership. Through this partnership, qualified district employees will be eligible to obtain certifications in special education, PK through 12, in just 18 months. All classes will be virtual, and employees will be able to complete internship requirements through their employment with the district. In conjunction with the agreed discounted tuition rate in the district's tuition reimbursement program, we are hoping to receive scholarship funds from PDE to ensure that this great opportunity is as affordable as possible for our staff. More information related to this amazing opportunity is available on the district's website and social media platform. The district spring well-being challenge trek to the summit will conclude on Sunday, May 21st, 2023. We have received overwhelming participation from staff throughout the district and look forward to all employees who participated in receiving water bottles from the Delaware County Health Care Trust. We also hope to have enough participants to be awarded as many as three Apple watches to raffle off. That concludes my report. Are there any questions? My question is regarding to the number of students, um, staff that is on the extended school year. There's 11 teachers, there's 10 classroom assistants, but there's also three climate managers, two safety officers, and two social workers, and they're all at the same building. Dr. The rest Pat, of the program. I'm sorry. Dr. Pless, can you? Um, Expound on that. Um, so again, why is the extended school year limited for special education students? I'm aware. So it's the the entire program is for the student teaching assistance, but the additional staff are to ensure the safety of all the students. So the Adventure Academy is at STEM, but the entire BSY. So if it's kindergarten, 12th grade, and um, the that are beyond 12th grade as well, they will all be at I don't know, I was under the impression that everything was going to be together. No, so the Adventure Academy is at 7. ESY will be at Chester High School, and um, Credit Recovery will be at Chester High School as well. Do we, are we, do we know how many people, students have signed up for ESY? We have approximately 146. Mm. They're all low incidential. Yeah, it, yes, it has been increased from last year. Last year we had approximately 81 students. Uh, so that's a significant increase. So it's not multiple um, disabilities, it's just the uh, life skills. Life skills, autistic support, um, excuse me, it's students who there's a concern around regression over the summer who have an IEP. So as a part of the process, team has criteria that they have to consider and answer those questions. If it's believed there's going to be a significant regression over the summer, then they're eligible for ESY via the IEP process, and the rep is issued, and also certain related services such as speech, OT, PT, um, and counseling are also available over the summer, which is why social workers are uh, staffed to be able to provide counseling support during the summer so that we can have those services. So is that um, part-time services as well? Uh, for PT? No. You said regression. Regression. So we think there's going to be a, a learning loss. So for instance, not having speech practice or not having the opportunity for physical therapy during the summer that can make a student eligible. I may be saying it wrong. Part-time um, supplemental. Does that include supplemental as well as? Yes. I have a further question. I understand that all the positions are contingent upon student enrollment, but if people have to be cut, how is that determined? It depends on what the contract states. So I want some of the <clears throat> some of our contracts indicate how individuals are picked for extra duty pay opportunities. 
and we're working with some of the programs around that. Is there a deadline from the start of the program as to when, if necessary, uh, in, if enrollment does decline, is there a certain cutoff date? So the original, the staff that are on there right now, they're based off of the projections of enrollment that have already been confirmed. So I believe for Adventure Academy, there's academic adventures, there are already over 300 students enrolled. So that staff will reflect that and the same for ES5. So unless there is a decrease, the staffing count will stay the same. And if it's an increase, then you have to hire additional staff. I'm not sure I was clear on my question in my mind. My question was, Oftentimes, we know we have students who find, and then if they don't show up, what is the cutoff date as to when we will um, cut down on maybe uh, staffing? Is there a certain date? Is it after the first week? Uh, you understand what I'm saying? So it would be based off of the enrollment. So right now, the projections are based off of what we have. So if um, I believe the SY starts sooner than academic adventures, if that process that we're going throughout the summertime, if the projection is lower, then we would address them at those point in time. But right now, it's just based off of what we have. Now, if I can add for adventure, um, academic adventures, we have a waiting list. I'm, I'm, I'm still on this ESY. I just want to add that. Yeah. Because you, Although my questions are coming about that next. So your your question is about the my staffing. question is there's no with, cutoff. It just depends on like it they, like there's no set date. So it's not like by June thirtieth if it decreases. It's just something that we watch. And just to add that these are com these are already confirmed with parents. So they're eligible as a part of their annual IEP process. Then prior to the start of the SY, so over the last few weeks, we've reached out to parents and got confirmation that they're intending to send their students and based on the tasks large number of those confirmed students do actually attend. And I understand that, but based on the history of the seven years I've been on the board, um, oftentimes parents will say their children are coming. I'm hoping with the SY that all of them will, but uh, after, say after the first week and you've got eight or nine kids missing, will you then release a teacher? Release it doesn't sound like employees. It. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. Well, it, it, it's not that well, just don't have an exact date. So I don't want to say like by June 30th, we will cut staff because that there is no date confirmed for that. So it, we would have to watch it. So if like the first week, eight students are missing, they'll likely reach out to the parents. If the next week, like it'll be something that we'll monitor, but there is no set date. So I would say like, you know, if there are X amount of days go by, Dr. Wilson may reach out and we may start to see those projections decrease, but it's just not, a, there's not a deadline. Okay. okay. In extended years at the high school? Correct. I have another question with that. So are we better off with our transportation? It's because they're bus, right? Yes. I see that because this is personnel. So we're hiring a different person. A transportation coordinator, what is? What is... Okay, so yes. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> I won't see five kids on a... Oh, yeah, that's that's a part of the, 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 the purpose of the hire. One of the things that we're looking to do is, you know, control our own um, routing. Um, so you're, you're seeing five students on a bus and then on the next corner, another five students on that same bus. That's, that's a part of the plan is to address the, um, the routing and um, the bus loads. So that's what that person will so assist it'll be, with. So it'll be better, which means... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be better. Okay, well, then um, the I'm pleased to, to hear that we have so many children and a waiting list for the academic adventure summer program. The parents are on a waiting list because they will ask us in the community at what what's the cutoff then to take children off the waiting list if other children don't show? Do we have a set date? We don't have a we had students drop our rules. That's when we add more additional students to the classes. Right now, we're at the hills of all grade levels. So oh, we have I mean, some grade levels with 48 students. Well, that is, I mean, that is wonderful mm -hmm. that we're going to have that many yeah. children involved. Okay. Right, thank you. What's the class size? The summer, I feel we want 1 to 20. Okay. And it's from? But June 20th to July 27th. But from first grade to kindergarten? Kindergarten, kindergarten. kindergarten to eighth. Oh, 20. Anyway. Could it be more than 20? Oh, it can be. It may have it to be. 
but ideally you want to keep grants money right. because there's some enrichment stuff academically that we want to address. Okay. And you said the date starts 20 to the when? June 20th to July 27th. We did extend the hours. It's a full day program now, mm -hmm. uh, which is also re the reason why parents mm -hmm. sign up as well. So. Okay. Very good. Okay. And that's Monday through Thursday. Monday, Monday through Thursday. Thursday. Congratulations. Thank you. That's good. Okay. All right. Next, we will hear from uh, Director Quell for curriculum. Uh, school year is winding down. The last student day is Friday, June 9th. And our seniors will be graduating from New at Newman University on Monday, June 12th at 11 o'clock. And that concludes my report. Mm -hmm. right. Do we know when um, class day is? June 6th. June 6th. June 6th. Let me just come in. Not throw out dates. Class day is um, everything's at Chester High School. Class day will be taking place here. Um, and it's going back to the traditional way of being done where all the seniors will be present for class day and sitting in the auditorium. Um, the, the students who will be recognized during class day will obviously be made aware of that, um, that they'll be receiving awards. Um, they'll receive that in the letter, that they'll receive something. Um, the goal is to have everybody here, all the seniors, but obviously the students who are going to be recognized will be made aware. And what time and is class? Let's pull it up. Okay, mm -hmm. Cl class day is on June the 6th. Um, it's in the morning, It's um, and that's at 10 o'clock on June 6th. Baccalaureate is 5 o'clock on June the 1st. June 1st is baccalaureate, um, and that is at 5 o'clock. June 1st, baccalaureate? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, I would like to thank whoever changed it, that all the 12th grade students, graduates, be in class day. I think that's remarkable, because all of them worked to get to 12th grade, but they may not have made the academic as, that some of them did, so I think they all should be recognized. Okay. Is it? Okay, next we'll hear from Director McLaren, Pupil Services. Chester Atlanta uh, participated in the autism walk, which took place in the pavilion in Chester on April 29th. Several high school students participated in the event and they staffed a resource table regarding um, Chester Atlanta School District resources for students with autism and their families. I think that's commendable because didn't it rain? <laughs> so that's why they had it in the pavilion. So each school are now re um, completing the end of the year surveys for students, parents, and staff for PBIS implementation. They will use the information to continue to strengthen the positive behavior support for our students. Uh, there's a class from Toby Farms, Miss Sorori. Sorosis. Okay, Sorosis class. Attended a trip at um, Thorncroft Equestrian Center and Art Barn. They provided pet therapy, art therapy to students, families, and other guests on a 70 acre facility in the beautiful landscape of Chester County. Students participated in sensory-based activities and learned about several famous artists, including the impact of their work. I know that was great. And we're hoping to expand that, um, that opportunities for our students in the upcoming year. Pupil Services is working, is meeting with Patan which is Pennsylvania Technical Training and Assistance Network related to the multiple tier system of supports, both district-wide and at each school. These meetings are as leadership meetings to revise the vision, use the data, and the implementation of interventions in the multi-tier system of supports. 
They'll continue to meet throughout the summer with revisions for 23-24 school year. Pupil Services is now accepting proposals for board certified behavior analysts, social work, occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech language pathologists, psychology, psychological and bilingual services. Wow. Students who receive these services are based on their IEP. We're looking to ensure that any subsequent contract Contracts meet federal guidelines. Could you explain that? So we just want to make sure there's a competitive bidding process uh, from any vendors that submit, uh, submit the RFP and that the rates that we're paying of the district are appropriate, um, but also that there is a um, comprehensive enough services for the upcoming school year. So we're okay. We're not looking for individuals, but organizations. Vendors, it could be in some cases, uh, independent contractors, so anyone that is, is willing to apply. We're not able to hire? So some are uh, in district, we do have some in district personnel, but we also need additional personnel. Now, this is good. We're um, having partnerships with Widener University and Eastern University. We're hosting seven BSWs, bachelors in social work, yes. students, interns, and masters in social work interns, and three school psychology interns for the 23-24 school year. They will provide direct individual and group support to our students. And the registration process for an extended school year has closed. The dates for that time uh, for extended school year is June 20th to July 20th, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 3. I thought it was extended to it's three for summer program for um, adventure. Okay. And ESY is a special. So it's still to one o'clock for ESY. That concludes my report. Okay. Anyone have any questions? No. no? <laughs> All right, I guess this concludes our committee meeting for this evening. Oh, Chester Upland School District is doing their spring concert next yeah, Tuesday? Next Tuesday, yes. Um, here at Chester May High 23rd. School. May 20. So if anyone wants to attend, it's happening. Oh, five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. The move and second. This meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.